Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Cam, and this earlier this week, I officially brought the AFI project to an end. I have reviewed all 100 movies on the main list. I'm very proud of it, and I'm looking forward to what is coming next on the channel. But I wanted to make one last video as kind of a, um, I want to say an epilogue to the AFI project and talk about modern movies that I would like to see on the list. Now, let me just say what this list is not going to be. This is not a demands list of add these to the list or else. I know for a fact that there are definitely great movies or great American movies that are definitely not in line with mine, and that is completely fine. The reason why I'm creating this video is because every time I would go to AFI.com to look at the list and see how far along I was, there was a message basically saying, this list is relatively old, and a lot of stuff has gone down, so we will be updating this in the future. It's more... It, it says a lot more than that, but that's the basic gist I got from it. Meaning that they're going to edit this list, whether it be for the 25th anniversary or something else. Because the list I covered was the 10-year anniversary, the most recent list. The earlier list had a completely, like, different set of movies. And the list that I covered for the AFI project stopped at 2001, which was The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. That was the most recent movie. And that list was completed in 2007. And let's just say a lot of great movies have come out since, since this list has been published. So I decided to compile a list of movies from 2002 to 2020 of movies that if the AFI people were to approach me and say, what would you include? These are my choices. Also, I put the call out to my Twitter at RyanCam20, link below, and for people to chip in on this, and, and people provided some great suggestions, so I will be peppering those in throughout the years where it is applicable. And one last note, this is not the correct list, this is my list, in the words of Sean Chandler. I know for a fact that that people will chime in with, well, what about this, or it should be this, and that is completely fine. These are my subjective picks. So with that out of the way, let's dig in. 2002 and 2003, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. You already have Fellowship of the Ring on there, you might as well complete the trilogy. and. Let's just stop for a minute and just admire the brilliance of this trilogy, the greatest film trilogy of all time in my opinion. The Fellowship of the Ring is excellent. It's one of the greatest fantasy movies ever made. However, Two Towers and Return of the King, at least in certain senses, give that movie a run for its money and sometimes even beats it. In the case of Two Towers, you have Helm's Deep, you have everything involving, involving Gandalf coming back and becoming the White Wizard. I could go on. Gollum, just fantastic stuff. And then there's Return of the King, which everything just comes together in just a brilliant final movie of this trilogy. It's an emotional roller coaster, and I believe it's one of the greatest movies ever made. If, if it has to be one of the two, I'd just say put Return of the King on there, but if I had my way, I'd put the whole trilogy on there. Also, shout out to Digicate, who I... who... I made my top five Hanna-Barbera shows that I'd like to see turned into movies list. I based it off of her video, or inspired if you will. She actually included three choices of, of her favorite movies from the 2000s or the 2010s. And one of her picks was Lilo and Stitch from 2002. I like that movie. I'm, I'm, not, I'm personally not sure it would go on the list, AF, the AFI I'm not sure if they would jive with that very well, but I'm more than willing to back you up there. But we'll see more of her pecs down the line. 2004, Million Dollar Baby. Something I noticed on the AFI list is kind of a dearth of Clint Eastwood movies. I really don't know why more of his movies aren't on there. I could understand why maybe the Dollars Trilogy isn't on there because those are Italian movies, but it surely can't be that Clint Eastwood just made movies that weren't worthy of being on the list. And so for that reason alone, I am choosing Million Dollar Baby. Just a straight dose of inspiration. Just, it's, 
oh, I'm, I'm getting PTSD just thinking about it. But it's an excellent movie. Clint Eastwood more than outdid himself and more than earned his Oscar this time around. But not just, not only was Clint Eastwood awesome, but Hilary Swank was great, and Morgan Freeman was good, as always. I kind of consider Million Dollar Baby a little bit like a female Rocky, so you have the regular Rocky on there, why not add a female counterpart? 2005, thank you for smoking. Now I know some of you are thinking, whoa, wait, thank you for, what? Let me explain. Thank You for Smoking was a movie written and directed by Jason Reitman, the son of Ivan Reitman, who would go on to, to write, and, write and or direct a lot of movies and is directing the next Ghostbusters movie coming up later on this year. But I believe this is his masterpiece. It tells the story of Nick Naylor, played by Aaron Eckhart, a man who works for the tobacco industry. And not only does he work for the tobacco industry, but he works in the marketing department of the tobacco industry. Meaning that his job is to sell cigarettes to people. Tobacco cigarettes who kill millions every year. I recommend this movie because it's a weird look into corporate America. And I kind of roll my eyes at movies that are like, we're going to take on corporate America. It's just like, cry me a river. But here it actually is very effective. Nick Naylor, played by Aaron Eckhart, is seen as a horrible person, but he just works in a horrible industry. William H. Macy's senator character is seen as a good Samaritan, but is secretly a horrible person who uses wheelchair-bound kids for political brownie points. It's a movie that celebrates the freedom of choice, and you shouldn't be swayed by anybody or anything. People can only do so much, and in the end, it ultimately goes back to you. This movie is secretly genius, and it is one of the more underrated movies of the 2000s. Watch it if you have not seen it. And also, shout out to Digicate again, who for 2005 put in The Producers, which... I... Wow, that's... That's a crazy choice to be... Wow. 2006. The Prestige. The Prestige is absolutely amazing. I think it's one of Christopher Nolan's masterpieces in a filmography that is mostly perfect. It's a movie that literally asks you to pay attention to every frame. Its literal first line of dialogue is, are you paying attention? My favorite Nolan movie is still Inception, however, Prestige is a close second or third. It's that good. And shout out to my boy Jacob Martin, who actually chimed in and, and said The Prestige is his favorite of the 2000s and the 2010s. So good on him for that. 2007, There Will Be Blood. There were a few years when doing this list where I knew the pick was perfectly obvious to me, and There Will Be Blood was one of them. I just watched this movie like about a year ago for the very first time, and the movie still has not left my mind. This movie is just incredible from a variety of areas. Cinematography, score, Paul Thomas Anderson's excellent direction. But what really sells this movie for me as one of the all-time greats is Daniel Day-Lewis, who is just amazing as Daniel Plainview. There Will Be Blood is someone who goes into something with the most noble of intentions, but through a series of unfortunate events just loses all sense of his humanity ostracizing pretty much everyone, from his son to his business partners. This movie is more than just a meme. I drink your milkshake! Just getting that out of the way. There's a lot to unpack with this movie, and it is more than deserving of being on the list. 2008, The Dark Knight. For those of you worried that there's just going to be a ton of superhero movies on here, there's literally only two movies on my list, and one of them is The Dark Knight, the rest we'll get to a little later. But it's pretty safe to say that like the late 2000s and all of the 2010s was just the time of superhero movies. A time that we'll probably never see again, though Marvel and DC are both desperately trying. And honestly, The Dark Knight has been talked about nearly to death. Even when I did my review of it for Nolan Month, I retooled it to just say top five underrated parts about The Dark Knight because the Dark Knight movie review is literally everywhere on YouTube. But honestly, this movie is excellent. Again, no matter how you slice it, Christopher Nolan basically 
burned down the village that was the superhero movie and built a city in its place. Basically, this this and Iron Man in 2008, I think 2008 was just the start of the modern superhero movie as we know it. 2009, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Now, I know some of you are going to say, hmm, that's a weird way of saying Inglorious Bastards, but I've never actually seen Inglorious Bastards. I'm going to see it eventually, but I've just never seen it. If I had seen it, I would have put it on the list, and I'm not going to put some, put a movie on the list just because I haven't seen it. But I have seen Fantastic Mr. Fox too many times to mention. It's one of the best animated movies of all time. It celebrates the medium of stop-motion animation. The cast is loaded from top to bottom. And it's just a beautiful story of a fox, a fox trying to tone down his wild side and finally embrace his, his family. When his home gets destroyed and Mrs. Fox confronts him and says, 12 non-fox years ago, you promised me that you would never steal another chicken, duck, turkey, or squab, or whatever they are. And I believed you. And she's like, why did you lie to me? And, and Mr. Fox just says, because I'm a wild animal. It, that whole scene is just, it's just perfection. I could gush about this movie for days, but we would be here all day, so just... Fantastic Mr. Fox, it's awesome. 2010, The Social Network. I've seen online that The Social Network is not necessarily everyone's cup of tea, and I do understand why, but I think just for the sake of how prevalent social media is in all of our lives, I think, social me I think The Social Network came out at just the right time. The performances are all excellent, Aaron Sorkin's dialogue is superb, the score is surprisingly underrated, that score is really good. And, well, to not go into spoilers, let's just say this movie more than goes into its title of You Don't Get to 500 Million Friends Without Making a Few Enemies. That goes double for this movie. Just for its relevance in terms of how, how prevalent social media is in all of our lives, I suggest putting it on the main list. 2011, Drive. You all have heard me gush about Drive on numerous occasions, and I will make a full-fledged review one day. But this movie is just cinematic excellence in every sense of the word. This was directed by Nicholas Winding Refn. Starred Ryan Gosling is a star-making turn in my eyes for Gosling. He wasn't just the heart of the frog from the notebook anymore. He was the silent assassin who would subtly curb stomp people in elevators. I have listened to the score of Drive so many times, it's not even funny. Like, it's just... An excellent score. Tick of the Clock by Chromatics, Night Call by Kavinsky, and everything in between. It is just excellent. 2012, Django Unchained. A Tarantino movie that everybody loves that I've actually seen. And yeah, this movie's great. Other than Pulp Fiction, this is my favorite Tarantino movie. Jamie Foxx is excellent. Christoph Waltz is even better. Leonardo DiCaprio was at his most deliciously evil as Calvin Candy. Samuel L. Jackson is somewhat sinister in this, and I did not expect that. This movie has its lighter moments and also its deep, dark moments, and Tarantino bounces it all to near perfection. And also, shout out to Digicade one last time, who put in The Avengers as one of her choices. And, well... Let's just say an Avengers movie is going to be among my choices, but the first Avengers is still excellent. Let's not get that twisted. Subscribe to her channel, it's awesome. 2013, Captain Phillips. I know this seems like a weird pick, but again, I chose it for the relevancy factor. I remember hearing about this as it was happening and being just really afraid of what was going to happen. I would put this on the AFI's list to show that Tom Hanks is not just Forrest Gump or Woody. He has legit acting chops. He's proven that before, but even here, it's just, he's just incredible. The scene where he finally gets off of that boat and is in, is, is getting treatment for all of his wounds, and he's just freaking out because he's just made it through that horrible situation, it'll bring tears to your eyes. Even though Paul Greengrass directed the original Bourne trilogy, I think this movie might be among my very favorites. 2014, Whiplash. 
First of all, shout out to new Twitter follower Will Crab, who included this among his choices, and we couldn't be more simpatico on that. And number two, if you follow me for any length of time, I have gushed about this movie a lot. I will make a review of it one day, but this movie is just, it's perfect. It really is. This movie is why I will always have time of the day for Miles Teller. He is excellent here, and especially J.K. Simmons. No longer is he just the guy looking for photos of Spider-Man. Like, he is a legit actor. He won an Oscar for it, and the Oscars pretty much validated their existence with that victory by itself. But this movie isn't just J.K. Simmons yelling at Miles Teller for 90 minutes. This movie is about success, what you're willing to do to gain it, and what you're willing to do to keep it, which may be even worse. If somehow you have not seen this movie, what are you doing? Go watch it. 2015, The Revenant, aka one of the most beautiful movies that I have ever watched, and I do not say that sentence lightly. Alejandro González Iñárritu created a movie that it is a revenge movie, and this concept has been done before, but through the beautiful cinematography, menacing music, and the excellent performances of Leonardo DiCaprio, and just the bastard performance of Tom Hardy, then you get the revenant. I dare not go any further into the spoiler quagmire, just go see it if somehow you have not. 2016, Arrival. 2016 was surprisingly a hard year for this one. There's there were a couple movies that could have easily taken this spot. However, I settled on Arrival, and Arrival is just brilliant in every sense of the word. This is not the last Denis Villeneuve movie on my list. But not only is this movie visually striking, but the story is also, weirdly for an alien invasion movie, weirdly small. The message of some things are inevitable, and you have the choice to either accept it or not, it's just profound stuff. This movie is smarter than the average bear, and Denis Villeneuve put a lot of TLC into it. This is Amy Adams' best performance. She knocks it out of the ballpark here. She should have won an Oscar for this, but she didn't, so there that is. But she's great here, as well as Jeremy Renner and Forrest Whitaker. This movie is just awesome. Go watch it if you haven't. 2017, Blade Runner 2049. Because, hey, the original's on there. Why not the sequel? The Blade Runner sequel was something that I just thought would never get made. It was one of those where it's like, oh, a director's on, now he's gone. This actor's starring, now he's gone. Harrison Ford's coming back, ah, uh, maybe not. There's a lot of, I hate to use the term, but fake news surrounding it. But the movie that we got was just excellent. Even though this movie ended up losing about $100 million, which is sad, it still is just a brilliant movie, and it is on its way to cult status, right next to the original. Denis Villeneuve's cinematography is just unbelievable, as well as his direction. Ryan Gosling kills it as Kay, and Harrison Ford gives his best performance that I've seen from him in many years. For a movie whose mood could best be described as, well, malcontent, he knocks it out of the ballpark and provides about as good a sequel to the original Blade Runner as we could ever ask for. Even weirded out Jared Leto is good here. Shout out to my boy Rio's POV at Rio Positive POV, who chipped in as his choice, The Shape of Water. And I have not seen it since I think I watched it at home. I have to watch it again, but I thought the movie was just okay. But I'm a big fan of Guillermo del Toro, so I think I'll just have to check it out again. 2018, Black Panther. Is this a perfect movie? No, I don't think so. But I think this movie is pretty important in the grand scheme of things. Even non-superhero movie fans who think that superhero movies are trash and they don't deserve to be a part of movie theaters, the most Martin Scorsese-loving people say that Black Panther is actually pretty good. That's, that's the power of this movie. And it even adds on to the legend that, sadly, Chadwick Boseman is no longer with us. It was directed by Ryan Coogler, who is a fantastic director, including movies like Fruitvale Station and the first Creed movie. But I think Black Panther is 
is tied for me with Fruitvale Station as among his best movies. For its cultural relevance sake, I would include it on the list. 2019, Avengers Endgame. Is this a predictable choice? Probably. But is it the right choice? Absolutely. I understand that there could be better movies in 2019, but at the same time, Avengers Endgame was just an event. And that gets thrown around a lot in the movie world, like this movie is an event. This movie was a legit event. Bit of insight into my myself outside of this YouTube channel. I worked at a movie theater for three years. My last stretch of time as a movie theater employee was during Avengers Endgame weekend. Thursday night when this movie came out, we had lines out the door from the concession stand here to the parking lot. That's how big this movie was. And it did not stop until we closed that theater at about 3 in the morning. Because the movie was three hours long, we had to, we closed the theater 20 minutes after the last movie, which was about midnight, started. That meant that I did not leave that theater, I was closing concessions that Thursday night, until about 3.30 in the morning. And I believe I had to work the next day. As tired as I was, I recognized that this movie was an event. And even if you take away the whole highest grossing movie of all time thing, this movie is a miracle. It really is. The Russo brothers took a lump of clay and they made a Michelangelo out of it. A beautiful balancing act. This movie pretty much ties everything that that we know about, I guess, the Infinity Saga into one movie. And whether you see it as a continuation of the MCU or just a celebration of superhero movies, I don't think superhero movies will ever get this big for a very long time. This movie should be celebrated, and that's why I want it on the list. And for 2020, Promising Young Woman. I saw this movie Christmas Day 2020. I didn't know what to expect. I was thinking this was going to be a boo men, yay women movie. And I just, I don't know. I just, that, those types of movies just kind of turned me off. But this movie wasn't that. This movie was a tragedy about, well, a promising young woman who was done dirty and decides to take revenge for it and revenge she does. I I don't make hyperbolic statements like this, but I think this has to be among the greatest first movies ever made, talking about Emerald Fennell in her directorial debut. Promising Young Woman is just excellent, and if you haven't seen it, like, do yourself a favor and watch it. And that's the list. <laughs> I have a feeling that the comment section is going to be very interesting, so just please be respectful, and if you have any of your favorite American movies that you would like to possibly, like, challenge mine or agree with mine, leave them in the comments. I'd love to read what you all have to say. As far as 2021 goes, again, the jury is still out. We are just approaching July, so anything can happen. I'm hoping Dune is really good. But for, to all the people who complain that great cinema is dead and that the 2000s and 2010s are just all about superhero movies and just dumb movies like that, that couldn't be any further from the truth. I almost had no problem finding great movies compiling this list. It, I was almost spoiled for choice. And again, none of these movies might be included on the revamped list. I really don't know. But again, these are my picks. And that is all for me. Thank you so much as always for watching. I'd like to thank all of the people on Twitter who responded to my tweet and got their comments in the video. They're, they're super great, either YouTube creators or just, well, YouTube creators, because they all, they're all YouTubers. But, but thank you to all of them. And if you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and if you like this video and you want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to allow notifications. That way, when a new video drops, you'll be the first to know about it. My name is Ryan Cam, and I'll see you in the next one.